This video series is presented by Drumtech, R Drums and Blash King. Welcome to the Acoustic to E Drums conversion series. This and the following videos are about the conversion process of a Pearl Rhythm Travel Up into an E Drum Kit. This episode is about building tom triggers. We will go for the cake pan method and apply aluminium discs to the shells. Two lugs including metal angles need to be applied to be able to measure the exact diameter. The angles are from our drums. They get applied with M4 screws. We measure the distance between the screws and the inner shell diameter. It is very important to not make the disc too big as there has to be enough space to move them up or down without them touching the normal lug screws. They take away around 5 mm in this case. We order the disc at Blech King DE. This company is specialized in metal sheet cutting. We choose aluminium as material because it is lightweight. The metal sheet should have a plain surface and not be thicker than 2 mm. The shape should of course be a circle. It is really important to submit the radius, not the diameter. Pretty simple. Now just press order and through the magic of an incredible shipping company it will be delivered within a very short time. We order discs for toms and bass drum. The circle appears to be a little bit too big. A circular can be helpful to determine the exact middle of the disc. I hope everyone paid attention in geometry class. The shells have six lux, so we need to divide the cake into six equal pieces according to the lux. The spot for the holes has to be marked too. The decoupler from our drums has a dimension of 40 by 40 mm. That means we need to make a 40 by 40 square and the spot for jack block and the cable clip. The spots need to be punch marked before drilling. We drill a 4 mm hole for the cable clip and 5 mm holes for the angles. The hole for the jack plug has to be as big as the jack plug winding. Fettling is required to remove the sharp edges. We made the mistake to not measure the inner shell diameter as accurately. As a result we have to take away material near the large hole to create space for the lug screw. Another big mistake was spray painting one side of the metal sheets with a cheap paint which will not last and does not look good. So we improvised and applied all inside parts to the painted surface. Of course after sanding. A pattern is needed to cover everything except of a square in the middle. It should dry for a few hours. Metal blades have the disadvantage to produce noise. This will lead to loud acoustic noises of the mesh pad. A way to damp the discs and to prevent them from swinging is applying rubber sheets to them. The sheets are made with the help of patterns. A test will prove if they fit before copy them onto the rubber sheets. The rubber material is called foam rubber and really easy to work with. There should be enough space for the rim piezo, jack block, metal angles and the cable clip. Again, the surface needs to be sanded before gluing the rubber. Spray adhesive is the best choice to glue on every kind of material. As you can see, the holes and the spot for the rim trigger stays free. The rim piezo gets attached via foam adhesive dot. 
with the smaller diameter to ensure a more sensitive trigger result. The dot needs to be smaller than the piezo. The decoupler is dividing head from rim piezo and the rest of the shell. The dot is again smaller than the piezo. Our drums labels the ground cable of their piezos, as it does not mean the black cable is necessarily the ground cable. The polarity of a piezo can be interchanged despite the cable colors. The guys from our drums measure every piezo with the oscilloscope and mark the ground cable with a white ring. In this case the cables got shortened and marked again. We apply some heat shrinking tubes before continuing. We remove the protective layer near the hole for the jack plug. The jack plug and its nut are only made out of plastic in this case. So be very careful when using a wrench. The piezos need to be connected in the right way. Find the download link to the wiring diagram in the description. We shrink the heat shrinking tubes near the hole to bundle the four cables. The cable clip will be applied with an M4 screw and a few washers. The clip ensures that the cables are not moving and cause rattling noises or destroy their isolation. Now it is time to apply the metal angles. As the aluminium disc has to be a bit lower than the angle bottom, it is best to apply a longer M5 screw and an extra washer to lift the angle up. This depends on the position of the shell's lug screws. The layer near the holes is getting removed before applying the angles. We use washers and nuts to secure the screws from spinning. Lock washers should be used too. The trigger blade is ready so far. The cone is still missing as it is better to attach it as soon as the disc is mounted in the shell. There is enough space for the lower screw and to move the angles up or down through the construction. That's it for this episode. If you're curious to see the end result, check out the upcoming videos of our conversion project. Click the left box to see a video about the VH11 hi-hat setup. Click the box in the middle if you want to see part 2 of this series. Or click the right box to see the next part of the conversion series. Thanks for watching and see you at the next episode.